everybody. Welcome to Manador Games. Today we're going to be talking about an EDH deck tech for Moldrotha, the Gravetide. Moldrotha is just value city. So she is three, a black, a green, and a blue, so six mana total for a 6-6 six, six elemental avatar that says during each of your turns you may play up to one permanent card of each permanent type from your graveyard. So we're going to be taking advantage of the value that Moldrotha has to offer with enter the battlefield effects. So I have three categories for these effects. So we have removal, card advantage, and then ramp. Removal, cards like Acidic Slime, Flesh Bag Marauder, Ravenous Chupacabra, and Shriek Maul. So we're going to be taking advantage of these effects by sacrificing our own things to get it to the graveyard just to have it come back next turn with Moldrotha. That's how we're going to accrue value over time. And for card advantage, we're going to have cards like Archaeomancer, which can get instants and sorceries back from our graveyard. Eternal Witness, get a card back from our graveyard. Uh, we're going to have cards like Trophy Mage when they enter the battlefield. You can search your library for an artifact card with converted mana cost 3, reveal it, and put it into your hand, and then you shuffle your library. Uh, we're going to have cards like Protean Hulk and Fierce Empath so that we can find big creatures that we want that are going to have a big effect on the game, um, or even like little combo pieces. So with combo pieces, a big card in the deck is Deadeye Navigator. It's going to allow us to abuse these Enter the Battlefield triggers even more with repeated blinking, blinking our creatures in and out to get that value. Our next Enter the Battlefield um, effects are going to be Glow Spore Shaman, Secure Tribe Elder, Wood Elves, World Shaper. So these cards are going to allow us to ramp. We're going to get um, we're going to get to search for lands when they enter the battlefield, and with World Shaper especially, it's going to allow us to dump a bunch of cards in our graveyard, which is basically like drawing cards in this deck. And then when it dies, you get to put all lands from your graveyard onto the battlefield. This is going to help us tremendously because we're going to hopefully be able to have a lot of lands in our graveyard sacrifice world shaper and get those all onto the battlefield that way we can have our lands for casting everything that we want so the next group of cards cares about the amount of cards in your graveyard so these are cards like boneyard worm Golgari grave troll and lord of extinction um, these can eventually be be huge creatures that can swing for lethal in some cases, especially Lord of Extinction. Um, I think he just gets huge, and if they remove them next turn, plop them back down, they're still a threat. So a way that your opponents are going to be able to stop you is by killing your Muldrotha. Um, so we got two ways to really help uh, negate that advantage for them. So this is going to be protection. So these are cards like Spore Frog, Seal of Primordium, and Executioner's Capsule. Uh, these are going to be cards that help you prevent combat damage um, and destroy th uh, their threats as well. Another way that another thing that threatens our game plan is going to be graveyard hate. So these are things like Bajuka Bog or uh, Graft Digger's Cage that stop you from casting cards from your graveyard or stop you from even having a graveyard. So to help with this, um, we got two artifacts. We got Perpetual Timepiece, which allows you to shuffle any amount of cards from your graveyard into your library so you get to keep those around and then elixir of immortality is going to allow you to shuffle your whole graveyard including it back into your library 
So this protects your graveyard from being exiled or it allows you to get those things back in your library when you're not able to cast them because that will come up sometimes. So to help us get our cards that we want into the graveyard, we're going to have to fill the graveyard up. So we're doing this with cards like Entomb, Dead Bridge Chant, Sultai Ascendancy, uh, Windfall, even maybe Dark Deals, or um, cards with Dredge like Sinkweed Imp. All these cards allow you to throw a large amount of cards into the graveyard um, so you have those at your disposal. Um, with your commander, we're going to take advantage of mana rocks like Commander Sphere, Mind Stone, Expedition Map. These cards um, have an ability where you can sacrifice it to either go find a land or draw a card. And with Moldrotha, we can cast it, sacrifice it, do that repeatedly every turn. Chromatic Lantern, I think, has to be in this deck. Uh, at least with my setup, because we want the card, we want to have our mana fixed. This deck requires a large amount of mana um, to operate, and Chromatic Lantern helps us fix that. Another area of cards that is going to help us win are Sacrifice Outlets. So I have three listed here, and these are the free Sacrifice Outlets. Um, Greater Good, which lets you draw cards and then even discard cards so you still have those cards at your advantage when you sacrifice a creature um, Alter of Dementia you get to you can target yourself for those cards so you can sacrifice your own creature put it in the graveyard you can just cast it again basically draw two cards and then second of all Ashnod's Altar so with removal if we get targeted with exile removal we can just sacrifice our creature goes to the graveyard, we play it next turn, and we even get advantage over it, mana or card draw. With Moldrotha, we're going to have some real trouble if she gets uh, killed a couple times. Um, so I have redundancy effects in here. So we have uh, cards like Dead Bridge Chant, which let us return a card randomly from our graveyard to the battlefield. So we get that card for free. Animate Dead lets us, again, do the same kind of thing. Journey to Eternity and Victimize. Um, so all of these allow us to get cards back from our graveyard onto the battlefield, and we don't need Moldrotha to do it. How do you win with Moldrotha? For my build, I included cards like Living Death, which allows you every player to exile their graveyard, sacrifice all the creatures they have, and then return all creatures exiled this way onto the battlefield. So hopefully we're going to have the biggest battlefield or the biggest graveyard and the best creatures in our graveyard to bring back into the battlefield and hopefully win within the next couple turns. Also, I included cards. This is a pet card of mine, probably. Grave Betrayal. Um, when a creature an opponent controls dies, you return it to the battlefield under your control with an additional plus one, plus one counter. So we get all their good cards that we're killing with our ETB effects. Beastmaster's Ascension is something we can use to make our creatures big. Uh, I don't really think that card fits very well in our build, but it's a possibility. And then also Tainted Aether, um, which really locks down our opponents. Um, if they can't deal with it, it locks us down too, but we are going to be able to you know, stay ahead of the game while they're falling behind because we can just get our creatures back from the graveyard, get our lands back from the graveyard, and so we can recover from that faster. Upgrades for the deck. I mentioned earlier Beastmaster's Ascension and how I didn't really think it was the best um, for our deck. If you want to spend the money, Crater Hoof Behemoth is good in any deck that can run green. Um, and I think would also be good in our deck as well. Cards like Shieldred, 
is going to be good. Uh, worm coil engine. Again, we're getting that value of creating tokens when it dies. And we can just do that repeatedly with our sack outlets and just bringing it back. It's an artifact and a creature, so it's utility for us. Um, cards like Contamination, I think, would be really fun to play with. Dictate of Erebos and Grave Pack effects um, that just have our opponents just killing their own creatures and us just getting value off of that. Again, with Ramp, we can have cards like Life from the Loam, which allows us to dredge anyway, so it gives us more card advantage, gets us lands onto the battlefield. Um, I think if you're going to go for an upgrade, Life from the Loam might be the one to get first for this deck. Let me know what you think about the deck. Uh, if you played against Smoldrotha, let me know what you think about her. Um, what do you think is the best combo with her? So cards that really go well with her. I'd like to know that, hear about that. Um, and what other decks should I do? Leave comments. Um, I like fun decks. I like weird decks. I'm thinking of doing a kind of weird tribal deck uh, soon. So let me know what you think. Uh, thanks for watching. Peace out.